Ladies and gentlemen, the Stanley Cup! Here are the facts you don't know about the Stanley Cup. Every year, the NHL teams go head to head for the Stanley Cup. But what is so special about this cup? How much do you really know about the Stanley Cup? Or was it named after your friend who owns a yard down the road? <laughs> it's not just a cup, but has a story behind it. The Stanley Cup is like the king of trophies in North American sports. It's the oldest one, bought way back in 1892 for just $48.67. But now it is worth $25,000 to $30,000. It's a fancy silver cup with the names of famous hockey players like Gretzky and Orr written on it. And everyone in the National Hockey League wants to win it. Lord Stanley of Preston gave the cup to the best Canadian hockey team in 1893. Since then, it's seen tons of exciting games and amazing players. Winning it is super hard, like climbing a giant mountain of hockey matches. But when a team finally gets there, it's a party like no other. The Stanley Cup isn't just for hockey players, though. Everyone knows it, even people who don't watch sports. It's like a star, shining in movies and TV shows. From a simple prize to the ultimate reward, the Stanley Cup keeps reminding us why hockey is so cool. The original bowl was 7.28 inches in height and 11.42 inches in circumference. It was composed of silver. The alloy used to make the present Stanley Cup is silver and nickel. It is 35.25 inches tall and 34.5 pounds in weight. It is the only trophy in professional sports to be engraved with the names of the winning team's managers, coaches, players, and staff. There was a year nobody could win the Stanley Cup. The first time the Stanley Cup was not given out occurred in 1919, when the Spanish influenza outbreak led the Montreal Canadiens and the Seattle Metropolitans to postpone their series. The series was deadlocked at two games to one, but due to hospitalizations with influenza, Jack McDonald, Edward Lalonde, Joe Hall, Billy Kutu, and manager George Kennedy of Montreal were never able to participate in the championship game. Four days after the postponed game, Hall passed away, and the series was scrapped. The cup has several misspellings and names that are not real. A large number of them have never been fixed. As examples, consider. Five times the name Jacques Plante has been spelled incorrectly. Bob Gainey was named Gainey when playing for Montreal. The Toronto Maple Leafs were called Lees in 1963, and one name was later removed. The Stanley Cup has a sequence of X's over the name of Peter Pocklington, a previous owner of the Edmonton Oilers, who in 1984 inscribed his father's name, Basil, on it. Jean Beliveau is the name that appears on the Stanley Cup the most. He makes 17 appearances, 10 of them as a player and 7 in management. With 11 Stanley Cup victories, Henry Richard is the player with the most. The Stanley Cup now has the names of 13 women. The original bowl, the cup that has been verified, and the replica housed in the Hall of Fame are the three Stanley Cups in existence. The Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto, Ontario is presently showing the original bowl that Lord Stanley bought. However, back in the day, winning the Stanley Cup meant a quick celebration and then goodbye to the trophy. Players didn't get much time to soak it in until 1993. Imagine winning the championship and only getting a few minutes with the big silver mug before it's whisked away. This is not so cool, right? Watch how the Montreal Canadiens changed everything. The Montreal Canadiens won the cup in 1993. They said, hold on, we just won the big one. We deserve a whole day with the cup. And guess what? They got it. Since then, every champion gets their special day with the Stanley Cup. They visit family, explore their hometowns, and create awesome memories that last a lifetime. It's not just about hockey anymore, it's about sharing the joy and feeling truly special. So that's how a simple rule change in 1993 made the Stanley Cup even more magical, both for the players and the fans. No more quick goodbyes, just pure, unfiltered championship love. 
but it is not about this alone. The party that comes after winning this cup is crazy. Players even drink. Even some players eat from the cup. Isn't that fascinating? Now here is a backstory before the rules were changed. The winning Montreal Wanderers gathered at a photographer's home in 1907 for a team picture with the cup. The photographer's mother used the cup that they had left behind to create a flower pot. <laughs> this is the most funny backstory. It was some months before it was claimed. A number of the 1924 Canadians players, on their way to owner Leo Dandoran's house to celebrate their victory, fixed a flat tire and abandoned it by the side of the road. On the snowbank, the cup was found just where they had left it. Do you think people didn't pay importance to trophies back then? Without notifying anybody, Guy Lafleur took it for the weekend in 1979 to show his friends back in Thurso, Quebec, where he displayed it for everyone to see in his front yard. Brian Trottier of the New York Islanders acknowledged using it as a bed and unscrewing the bowl to use as a dog dish. This is funny, but a huge disrespect to the cup. When New Jersey won the cup in 1995, Martin Brodeur drove around Montreal while wearing a seatbelt and kept the cup in the passenger seat. The Tampa Bay Lightning's Andre Roy proposed to his fiancée Wow using the Stanley Cup as an engagement ring bearer. There are so many funny stories about this cup. What do you think? Was the Stanley Cup disrespected in the past, or is it overhyped now? Let's hear your thoughts in the comment section.